In this video, we're going to focus on the donation and withdrawal of electron density to or from benzene rings through resonance effects, through resonance structures. One of the key things to keep in mind here is the general nature of electron donating and withdrawing groups by resonance. Recall that we defined an electron donating group in a previous lesson as anything whose atom connected to, in this case, the aromatic pi system bears a lone pair in a p orbital that can overlap with that pi system. This is our general structure for what we previously called an electron donating group, and what we can now clarify is an electron donating group by resonance specifically, since we can draw a resonance structure that engages the lone pair and pushes electron density into the aromatic pi system. We previously also defined the nature of a general electron withdrawing group as something containing an XY double or triple bond where the Y atom distant from the aromatic pi system is more electronegative than the X atom so that the XY bond is polarized in this way. Because we can draw curved arrows involving pi electrons within the aromatic and these pi electrons in the XY bond that leave positive charge within the aromatic pi system, these groups are electron withdrawing groups and more specifically they're electron withdrawing by resonance because we can draw these resonance forms. In this video we'll see specific examples of resonance donating and withdrawing groups, see in detail the exact positions in terms of ortho, meta, and para that are modified in electron density by these groups, and we'll address this question of which is stronger, resonance effects or inductive effects. Way back at the beginning of the course, we explored the idea that resonance is really a Lewis structure representation of orbital overlap effects. And that's no different in this case. In this context, the substituent either donates or withdraws electrons through the use of a strong electron source or strong electron sink. Substituents that contain a strong electron source, almost always a non-bonding lone pair orbital, connected directly to the benzene ring are electron donating groups by resonance and the key orbital interaction here is between that non-bonding lone pair and one of the empty pi orbitals of the aromatic pi system. Electron withdrawing groups contain strong electron sinks such as the pi star orbital directly attached to a benzene ring. These can also involve empty atomic orbitals, for example when a carbocation is directly connected to the benzene ring. These structures are electron withdrawing groups by resonance and the key orbital interaction is from the pi system of the aromatic, a filled pi orbital, the highest occupied pi orbital of the pi system, to the empty A or pi star orbital. That's all I really want to say about the orbital effects here. Where I want to focus on the rest of this slide is on the general structures of resonance donating and withdrawing groups and resonance forms that come from engaging the substituent in resonance. In the donating case, we have a lone pair on an atom that's directly connected to the benzene ring. That means we can push electrons like this in an end pi star fashion to generate a new resonance form. Of course, we don't have to stop here. We can continue the electron flow to generate a second new resonance form. And finally, we can generate a third important resonance form just by continuing the same type of electron flow. These resonance forms are telling us a couple of things. First of all, the ring is more electron rich than benzene itself, since we can draw a resonance form with negative charge within the ring without a compensating positive charge within the ring. The implication here is that rings substituted with resonance donating groups are electron rich. The other important thing that these resonance structures are showing us is the locations where the extra electron density resides, where we see negative charge within these resonance structures. Where do we see the negative charge? Well, at the positions here and here, as well as the position here. Relative to the X substituents, the activated positions are the two ortho positions as well as the para position. And ultimately what these structures show us is that the ortho and para positions are relatively nucleophilic relative to unsubstituted benzene. Let's do the same type of analysis for a resonance withdrawing group. The key here is electron flow like this from the pi system towards the electronegative Y atom. This electron flow generates a resonance structure in which there's positive charge within the ring. And we can continue flowing electrons to show the other positions that share that positive charge within the ring. Here's one of them. And to draw the third, we can engage the same type of electron flow. Notice that in this case, these resonance forms are showing us that the benzene ring is relatively electron poor. Since the resonance structures contain a carbon with positive charge without a compensating carbon with negative charge within the ring. 
The other thing these structures show us is these sites that are specifically activated, in other words, where the electron density is specifically drained from within the ring. And just as in the donating case, the key positions are the ortho and para positions relative to the location of the substituent. In benzene substituted with resonance withdrawing groups, the ortho and para positions are electrophilic, and the meta positions are relatively nucleophilic relative to the ortho and para positions since they're not drained of electron density by resonance as the ortho and para positions are. Here are some important examples of resonance donating and withdrawing groups. And what I really want to draw your attention to here is the way in which all of these substituents fit the general patterns in red and blue, and to just briefly mention their names as you'll be hearing them a lot. The NR2 group is an amino group, and it has a nitrogen bearing a lone pair connected directly to the benzene ring, typical of a resonance donating group. OR can be either alkoxy, if R is an alkyl group, or of course hydroxy if R is hydrogen. And here again, the only difference between amino and the OR group is the presence of an oxygen instead of a nitrogen. The X atom is a halide, and this too is donating by resonance. Despite our intuition that this is an electronegative electron withdrawing atom, at least by resonance, ignoring that electronegativity effect for a second, this does fit the general pattern of a resonance donating group. The diversity of resonance withdrawing groups is somewhat greater. We have the cyano group. Notice here we have a triple bond, but it still fits the pattern since the XY bond here can be either double or triple. We just need a pi bond between X and Y. We have carbonyl in all of its various forms with various types of R groups, carbon, hydrogen, and heteroatoms connected to the carbonyl carbon. And C double bond N is characteristic of an imine functional group. One of the strongest electron withdrawing groups is the NO2 group, whose full resonance structure is drawn here. This is known as nitro. One famous example of the nitro group connected to an aromatic core is the molecule trinitrotoluene, which contains three nitro groups meta to one another and a CH3 substituent, making it a toluene. This group is reminiscent of a sulfonate, and the group itself is known as sulfonyl. I mention this one because it's possible to synthesize benzene sulfonic acids. This is a reaction we'll look at later, and so keeping in mind that the SO double bond is an important electron withdrawing group by resonance is important in that reaction and in any context where we're going to use that product for something else. Finally, let's address the question of resonance versus induction in general. Because resonance involves orbital overlap, while induction involves just the polarization of bonds, resonance effects are, in general, stronger than inductive effects. This is true in almost all cases. The only case when it's not true is when the polarization of the carbon-R bond is so large that this bond dipole matters more than orbital overlap effects. That electronegativity also keeps the atom from wanting, quote unquote, to donate its lone pair in a resonance sense. It makes the resonance structure with X positive less important due to the electronegativity of the X atom. As a general point, though, you can keep in mind that resonance effects are stronger than inductive effects for all but the most electronegative of elements, the halogens. And this is why, for example, the amino group is net electron donating despite its inductive withdrawing nature. Resonance is a stronger effect than induction for the nitrogen atom. This is true even when the substituent itself is substituted with an electron withdrawing group by resonance, as when we have a carbonyl group connected to a nitrogen or to an oxygen that is in turn connected to a benzene ring. The one exception to this idea is the halide, which shows up on the net electron withdrawing side. This is because this bond is so heavily polarized toward the X atom, and X is so electronegative, that it really does not want to donate its lone pair toward the pi system at all. The resonance structure with X positive is generally a poor resonance structure. One group that's not exactly withdrawing by resonance because it can't engage in resonance, but that's electron withdrawing nonetheless, is the ammonium group, NR3+. And it's suggested by the formal charge here, there is a strong pull toward the nitrogen atom and from the aromatic pi system associated with the carbon-nitrogen bond. All of the others on this slide are groups that are electron withdrawing by resonance that we've seen before. In the next video, will clarify what makes one group stronger or weaker as a donating or withdrawing group in more detail and look at an empirical basis for this that's based on measurements of equilibrium constants.